Hey guys and welcome to this week's video. Today is just going to be a super quick tutorial on how to make your own typeface. Now I'm not going to be showing you how to make a serif or sans serif or slab or calligraphic typeface at all. I'm just going to be showing you how to make the skeleton of a typeface and how to understand typography a bit better. So we're going through the real basics today and I have set up this template for you. So to start off with, we're just going to go through a few basic principles. Now for me, there is four measurements that you need to be really aware of when you're creating your typeface because these are going to be what brings unison to all your letter forms. So the most important one is your X height. Now your X height is literally the height of the letter X. It can also be the height of any short character like your vowels, your A, I, O, U, and so on and so forth. So today I have chosen to do an X height of five units and my units being these boxes and I'll explain about them more later. But that is your X height. And then you have your ascender height. So your ascender is letters which come above your height of your X height. So if, for instance, the letter T is an ascender because it is a tall letter. So is H, so is K because they're all tall letters. So in contradiction to that, a descender is something which comes below your X height or your baseline here. So that would be a long letter which comes down like a J or a P where they all go below your X height. The final measurement which I want to you to pay attention to is your letter width. Now your width can vary from letter to letter, but today I've set up this grid here for my average letter width. And my average letter width is going to be five units, just like my X height, just a box to make it nice and simple for us. Now I did say that there was four key measurements that we're going to be aware of. There is going to be one more, and that is going to be our kerning. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my box here, which is for my letter form, and I am going to duplicate it and I am going to put it next to my other box. Now for me, this represents two letters next to each other. So first letter, second letter. This gap in between is the space between letters. This, if it was all the letters lined up, is called tracking. And tracking pretty much means the space between all letters. Then we come to kerning, which is the space between two specific letters, and I'll get into that later once I show you some type examples. So how am I going to make the skeleton of typeface? Well, you can make it with me. It is pretty simple. All we're going to do is something like this example. So in this example, all I have used here is this single unit, which in my Adobe Illustrator is just a square made up by um, two by two on the Adobe grid um, and it's just a pink outline and what I've done is I've counted this as one unit and then come over here and made my X height, ascender height and descender height out of these units. So my X height of a sub four was five units, descender height is three units and my ascender height is also three units. And don't forget my letter width unit was five across and my tracking unit was one. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these blocks like Lego and create my typeface out of it. But I, I'm assuming you already guessed that. So how about we give this a go on a new layer. So the first letter I'm going to make is going to be the letter O. The reason I make the letter O first is because it is the most simple of all the letters. In most cases, it's a circle. In this case, because we're using geometric shapes, it will be a square. And using this skeletal pattern of making these boxes into the shapes of letters, it's actually gonna be the basis for all the letters to come. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So I'm just gonna fast forward and create this O for you. Okay guys, so I've made my letter O and it is five by five for my X height and my width. 
Now, as I said, it, I'm going to create all of my letters from this. How? I will show you right now. So now I've made my letter O, I'm going to go across and I'm going to make a lowercase a. So I am just going to copy this and paste it, drag it across into my next letter box. And here I'm just going to turn it into an A. So we're going to do a lowercase a. So I am going to come here and move this little guy over here. And then I'm going to copy these two and move them in. And now I've made an A and that took two seconds from my O. So I could go across and I could keep making my letters from my O. I'm just going to cheat here and flip my A upside down. And then magically I have an E. And then I can go with my E again, drag him into place. And just so you guys know, I am using Snap to Grid, so that's why all my letters are staying nicely, like neatly next to each other. Okay, to make my letter S, I'm simply going to drag this box over to the other side and delete that. So it's magic. So you can go through and create all your X height letters here, but I'm going to go through and skip that and I'm going to show you how to make an ascender. So don't forget, as I said, an ascender is going to be a tall letter. So we are going to make a couple simple letters. We're going to just do all lowercase at the moment. So I'm just going to make a capital T. So we're going to start off with just simple one line. So that's my X height, but this needs to be taller. And as you can see here, my measurement for my center is three blocks up. So we're going to take another three, three blocks and we're just going to add that onto there and we have made our center. Now, you can use your capital L, which is the shape we have here for the base of all your ascenders because all of them are that tall. But I'm already going to turn this guy into a new letter. I'm going to turn him into a lowercase t. Now you might be thinking, I don't want my t to look like that. I just want to have this or I want to have it looking like this. Well, that is perfectly up to you. You can do whatever you like and that's the beauty of this exercise. Might I just say though, the beauty of these skeletons is that the only measurement which is negotiable is the width of your letter. So most letters you wanna keep consistent, so they match your style, but things like an I, an L, a T, they're going to have a different width because they are just skinny letters. And letters such as an M or a W are going to be wider because they simply don't fit into this 5x5 five five box I've got going here. So it's okay that my T is only three blocks wide as long as it has the same tracking here as my other letters and it looks nice fitting in with them. So talking about wider letters, how about we go and make an M? So again, I'm just going to steal my little O here, just because he has all the blocks I'll need. And I am going to delete these bottom ones, or in fact, I'm just going to move them for now. Okay, they're moved out of the way, and I'm just going to move this big guy across by a couple blocks. Okay, this is how wide my M's going to be, and I'm going to make it really simple for myself. All I'm going to do is move that down, I'm going to add two in. So now I've made a lowercase m, and this m is seven blocks wide, but it still fits in with my complete design because it has the same x height as all the other letters, and it's got the same spacing here, same tracking as everything else, so it fits in. So there is exceptions to the width rule, you just don't want all your letters to be a different width, such as your vowel, they should all be the same width except for your i. So now we're just going to go through and do our final thing, which is making a descender. So I am going to make the letter J. And that's really simple. So again, we need to have our five letters here, our five units, sorry, and our five units to start off with to create 
our x height and then here we'll need another three because that's my descender height as you can see over here in my little grid I made up for myself. So here we go. And to make my J, I am going to add a tail across here. So I am just going to take the tail of my S here, which is just four blocks across, and there. Now I don't really like how that style looks. It's not really complete for me. So what I want to do is I want to actually make a little hook for my J's tail. I am just going to bring it right up here like that. Just move my J across so it's not touching my M. There we go. And the final thing I'm going to do for my J is just add it'll I think it's called a tittle on top which is just the little dot here. Now I can keep my J like this or I could delete this square here and bring my J in so it's shorter. I could delete this box so it's a bit more of a stylized J. I can do whatever I like because it's my typeface and I can do what I want. So here we have our letters and I just want to point out here is that my M and J had the same spacing as all my other letters here and I can show you by simply taking a box, make it a different color, and placing it in between my M and T, and then dragging it over here to my M and J. See how they have the same spacing? But to your eye, it doesn't look like that. It looks like my J is much farther away from my M. In fact, it looks like my, like my J is the start of a whole new letter. So what we need to do is we need to use kerning. And kerning is, as I said before, the spacing between individual letter sets. So we're going to take our J here and we're going to bring it a lot closer to our M. And we're going to try and make that spacing look a little more optically exact. So now my J is in and he's hooked underneath my M. But if you take a look here and I bring back my little green box, his spacing here matches the spacing between my M and T matches the spacing between my A and E, and looks like it is one word. So you can play around with this however you like. You don't have to do the exact design that I have done for my typography. You can really branch out. So this design here was using my original typography, which was the five by five, with a little bit of kerning on my T and Y, and everything else just has one unit gap but then I went and had a play and I created a different set so this set just simply has the word happy and instead of having my three block ascender my five block x height my three block descender and my five block width I actually went for something different I went for a two block ascender a five block x height a six block descender and a six block width and that gave me a completely different look. So have a go, have a play, give yourself some time to experiment and hopefully this will give you a deeper understanding of typography and in your next step, you can create your own typeface. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you like my videos and wanna see more, please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to see more of my work, please check out my Instagram and my other social media sites. Please comment if you have any questions and please send me any work you do based on this. I would love to see your work. Have a good one and I'll see you in a future video. Bye!